Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here again from Scratch and today, well today we've got the dis standard disclaimer here for this channel, I'm about to cover an audio tool. That means there is going to be some ear bleeding by the end of this video, you have been warned. I have no skill when it comes to creating music, but it doesn't mean I won't try. And what we're looking at today, it's Fama Studio. I looked at this a couple of years back, but there's been a major development on it, so I thought I would revisit it. And I really like this program. Basically it is like a DAW, or digital audio workstation, for creating NES music. Yes, you can actually create create, uh, basically using the exact same process you used to create for the um, Nintendo Entertainment System back in the day. This is a tool for creating that kind of music. Now, it's called Famous Studio because in uh, foreign markets, if, well, if you're North America, uh, it was called the Famicom. Otherwise, it's called the NES for us uh, Canadians and Americans. And that's what this tool is all about. Now, a couple of weeks back, they released 3.2.0. I'll come back to some of the new features of it. But first, let's get into the ear bleeding. This here is Fama Studio. And the cool thing is when you first launch it, there's this nice little cartoon-based tutorial talking you through how to use it. And truth of the matter is, using Fama Studio is super simple. But you sort of have to understand how the hardware worked back in the days. Uh, but this walks you through everything you need to know to get started. There is full documentation. We'll get back to that in just a second as well. And here you can see a sample. So you can do things, basically you have a couple of different um, processes you can use to create uh, your music. You see them over here at the left, square wave, uh, two square wave, a triangle wave, a noise generator, and so on. And basically you can just start using it like you would for editing a DAW. So I go up here into the first section and I can just start doing the notes. Again, your music is pretty primitive for the most part, and you got control over how your instrument is created. Um, you can create arpeggios. I forget how to say that every single time, but uh, so we can go here. You ready for that ear bleeding? Because it is coming soon. Oh, by the way, you can uh, you can scale in and out to. Uh, showcase more of the window. You can scale back and forth and so on. So now let's do a triangle wave pattern as well. I don't know why they're not all making noise, but... Alright, there we go. So here is our masterful song. Don't worry, I'll show you like one of their examples after your ears have stopped bleeding. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. Don't forget, you were in fact warned. I just want you to know that right up front. Uh, you have control over how the sound uh, sounds. Uh, you've got a number of control over uh, how the device itself is set up. You can have it in trackpad mode. Uh, you got a lot of control over here. You can set up uh, a metronome for playing if you want. Uh, so you got some configuration over there. You got some configuration over here over your sound, um, how you want the tempo mode to work uh, there. Uh, you can set. Uh, the expansion audio for various different devices that were out there, you can set them up as well. So you could take use of those uh, and so on. Uh, but basically, you just basically paint your song. Uh, and now let's go hear some good ones. And these chip with it, which is actually pretty cool. So let's get rid of my masterpiece, unfortunately. And let's bring in uh, DuckTales. All right, so go ahead, we'll open that one up. And here you can see a much more complicated song, but basically built on the same setup. So we got a drum loop in there this time. We got uh, a couple bass beep looping and so on, but it's the same process. So you can come into any one of these that you wish and you can control like so. And obviously you see the, the notes are at a different speed. That's why they're much smaller here. Um, we go ahead and play this example instead. So you can see how uh, you can definitely recreate that old 8-bit music sound using Fama Studio, which is, again, very quite cool. And we got a number of different other examples here. So let's say uh, we want to go for Shovel Knight, a modern game using that kind of style. And here you can see a much more complicated song, but the same kind of deal. Uh, so you got multiple different square waves, saw waves, and so on being used. Uh, but same basic process. Any one of these, again, you can just drill down into it and control it right there. And let's hear what this one sounds like.
So as you can see, you can obviously create much more complicated than just beep, 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 beep that we did initially. Again, I'm not a musician. I'm not even going to pretend to be. Here you can see a number of controls on it. Most of these things are just basically for setting the color. But here you can see, you can set the BPMs of the song. Uh, so if you want, obviously, faster notes, you can do it right there. Uh, you got control over the various different instruments. Uh, you can also even create uh, like one bit instrument samples using DPCM samples. I'll show you how you can do that with the documentation available. Uh, you got configuration values over here. So this is you know, controlling how a drum would sound. And then here you got control over, this is the uh, ARP, arpeggio, or I know I'm saying that, arpeggio uh, envelope settings right there. And again, you can set the color coding of the various different instruments that are used over here. So that is um, Fama Studio in action. It's very simple to learn, uh, and there is some good solid documentation available. And as you can see from some of these examples we saw, if that's the sound you're going for, this is one of the best tools out there for creating or recreating that kind of sound. Uh, you see over here, this is one of the major new features. And what this is, is my phone. And this is my phone being mirrored. You can see here we got roll down tools available, sounds available there. Uh, we've got control over the various different types of music available. And I can go ahead and play this off my phone, which is just being uh, mirrored to my computer. So. Right there, you have the exact same thing, but now available on Android. And the coolest thing is this Android app is available on the uh, Google Play Store completely for free. So if you want to create your music on the go, you can do so. And at the same time, load the same kind of project file so you can import them in. There are a number of different examples available. So let's say you want to make Mega Man 2 style. Uh, so if you make a project on your computer, you can edit it on the go uh, on your phone. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no iOS version as of yet. Uh, full touch controls, uh, if you do a long press, you'll bring up the dynamic menu. So if I want to say go to the piano roll for that thing, you can see it right there. Everything is interactive as you touch it. You got a quick menu down the right hand side. Uh, basically feature parity with the desktop version, which is a pretty sweet thing. And you got control over uh, various different effects that are available there as well. So that is it running on my phone. And the cool thing here is it actually works in either aspect ratio uh, and it scales well. So if I rotate, we're good. If I go backwards, we're good. Um, so, okay, I think I may have annoyed my computer. All right, so I'm going to stop rotating it because it seems to have <laughs> irritated the uh, um, the mirroring software I'm using. But anyways, you can see there is a full Android application available as well as of the most recent release, which by the way was 3.2. But they've actually done, since that was released a couple of weeks back, they've actually added uh, a couple of hotfix releases as well. So this is software that is updated pretty continuously. If you're working on chiptune or NES style uh, sound, you can do so. Uh, you can see here it actually can run on 6502 on the NES sound engine, which is pretty cool. Uh, it is available on the Google Play Store. Uh, it works on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. So, uh, and as a portable version, you can literally just download it and play the executable, which is pretty cool on the whole. There are some tutorials on getting you up and started. On top of that, it is an open source project. So if you want to check it out. It's available on GitHub. Uh, I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you want to grab it, uh, it's under the MIT license, which is a very liberal license, allows you to do pretty much what you want with it, uh, with the source code, which is very cool. As you can see here, last updated two days ago. So it is very actively updated. Uh, it's a very cool project, one I think more people should be aware of. And uh, once you get the uh, bleeding wiped up from your ears, uh, hopefully you can head over and download it. If you want to learn it, it is also very well documented, uh, which is nice. Walks you through everything you need to know for all the various different platforms all the features and functionality that are available to you. Uh, you can also hook up a MIDI keyboard. So if you have a MIDI device and you want to control and play it that way, you can do so that way as well. So if you are looking to do chiptune style um, music, this is pretty much one of the best options out there. Uh, and it is completely free, completely open source, available on all the major platforms, including now on the Google Play Store uh, for Android devices. And the Android version is actually really quite fine. Highly recommend checking that out if you can. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is Fama Studio. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Is there another uh, chiptune type device or um, software out there that you recommend over it? Let me know that. Comments down below as well. And I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.